Hello and welcome to another video coming to your GCSE Computing course. In this video we're looking at the 15th topic in this series which is all about the database management system. So um, I've just said it, uh, DBMS stands for Database Management System. And you may be asked to um, state what, what the initials mean. That's an easy one mark question you don't want to forget to learn what that means. I think it's quite easy to learn. Database Management System and that sums up what it does. So if you just define it in a way, this isn't really a definition, but it maybe explains it better. A DBMS is a program that handles, another word for managers, databases. And it allows for user or users, there can be multiple users involved, usually there will be multiple users involved, to add data, extract it, and we looked at this in a previous video, it extract it can be it's got the same meaning as interrogating it, and you can also edit the details of it through the DBMS. So a DBMS is desirable for lots of reasons, it's, otherwise it wouldn't be used at all. And one of the reasons are that it allows a degree of separation from other applications. The DBMS is separated from the applications and the database, as we'll look at in a little diagram in a sec. So this is desirable for lots of reasons, like I said, but an important reason is for security and when it comes to lots of users accessing, accessing it at the same time. And again, we'll look at that in a sec. So this is because... So the reason why it's um, separated is because the database uses a standardized programming language such as SQL, which you don't actually have to look at in this course. In the AQA course, you have to know about SQL. You don't need to know about it in this course. Um, but that's an example of a database programming language. And the programming language is, is standardized across the applications for DBMS and the database. So that means it interacts with the other applications, users, and even other DBMS systems. Um, and then the DBMS does all the more complex processing depending on what the user or program is asked for. That's a little bit complicated, but hopefully I'll um, explain that in a sec. So the DBMS, what it does, it bridges the gap between the database and the other applications who require access to it. So the other users or other programs that need access to it. So if we have three or just any number of applications here, um, then you have your DBMS and the applications speak, but they don't obviously not actually speak, they, they handshake and they connect to the DBMS somehow um, and then the DBMS connects to or is linked to the database so the, the DBMS has a, it's linked to the database um, and it manages it, it controls it, it controls access to it as we'll look at in the next slide um, and the applications, so this, is, this could be, um, if this was a company so uh, like I said, I think I said the DBMS systems are usually used for large companies, large websites, when you have lots of users accessing it at any given time. Um, so if you have, so each each here, I just did application as an example. If if each um, thing requesting something from the database here is a computer and a company, um, the DBMS will filter the request and make sure that all the requests get served by the database. Um, so. If you've heard of it, it's almost like a firewall in that access um, in that respect. The firewall is used to filter out internet um, traffic, and it's similar to that. And here, so for an example of this being used, um, YouTube. I know YouTube does it. Um, so, for example, if you liked a video, so if you like this video, your like would the YouTube will send some code to the DBMS it uses, and then the, the DBMS will update the database for this video. So when the video is loaded again, another like appears. Um, and that, that and so on a on a video that has maybe two thousand likes, um, you have two thousand individual users accessing the DBMS just for that video. So clearly, for YouTube, the DBMS they use is going to be huge, absolutely huge, and it's going to be huge, huge database as well. Probably lots and lots of just databases. Um, so let's have a look at some features of a DB DBMS, and this links into a lot of what we talked about in the last slide so if you're confused hopefully this will clear it up so a DBMS has several key features that can be used to create customized data handling applications the last bit of this is required by the spec and it confused me a lot when I first saw this I, I made this all this information and then I looked at what the spec said again and what I'd written didn't go along with what the spec meant which confused me a bit because it goes against something that I thought was, was true um, but I've actually taken a lot of information from this slide from a question that was in an exam paper a couple of years ago and the mark scheme especially so hopefully this is as accurate as I can make it. Um, so a, a first feature we can look at is the fact that DBMS provides a set of tools for accessing and maintaining the database. An example of this are it allows you to create tables within a database and running queries. We'll look at what qu queries mean in the next video. Um, you don't need to know about that just for now. Um, 
So the reason why this may help with creating customized programs or applications is that you can selectively choose what tools of the DBMS you want to use with your program. So YouTube, if we're doing our likes example, YouTube would use the tool that would allow it to update the database with extra likes or, or whatever. Um, so another feature is that the application is independent from the database. So the DBMS is independent from the database, which we looked at before. Um, the reason why this allows greater customability, which is I'm not even sure what's a word, um, but you have the person who runs for DBMS has got a greater choice of what database and data DBMS providers they choose. So there are lots of um, ways to create to create databases. Some companies will provide a service to do databases. Likewise, there are DBMS providers um, such as Microsoft Access, um, which is quite a small time DBMS provider. Um, and the fact that they're separate, you don't need. So if you if you wanted to choose a database for any given reason, you know the size, the cost, you're not obliged to use a certain management system. You can, in theory, choose a different system that suits your needs personally. So you have a greater choice. You have um, more custom customizability in that access. So if you wanted to change your DBMS, it wouldn't ruin your database you could they're sort of separate which is which is useful um, so another feature that's useful is that the DBMS will automatically check for issues so what it does it validates the data stored and what this means is when the DBMS is set up it can be customized for the users specific purpose so an example is that it can be made so that it that really it checks the price is submitted or in pounds only. Um, if we talk about it in our YouTube example, it's um, views or actually no, let's do likes. So if when you submit these likes to the database to the DBMS, it sees that like 30 likes have come from the same IP address, the same computer. It's going to smell a rat. It knows that someone's been trying to cheat the system, and it won't validate the data submitted it will just discard it because it knows that someone's trying to trying to get around the system and trying to add likes to their videos that they don't need it. I don't know who'd be sad enough to, to create accounts to do that but anyway it, it just double checks that so make sure that the, that the information stored in the database is as accurate as possible. So finally the last feature that the, the mark scheme I looked at mentions is that it controls access to the data and this is good so in the previous video, in video previous slide we looked at the fact that it's sort of in the middle between the database and the applications and it controls the access to it which is great for security purposes it filters out dodgy um, requests it, it makes sure that only registered users can access a database um, and it, it prevents it from maybe being hacked as easily um, so that's good for security and when it's also good when multiple users try to access a database at the same time so the DBMS may allow depending on what it is allow several users to access it at the same time it may not it may have to do it in like a, an order so um, one at a time sort of thing and it's useful to, to be able to customize that as you want to um, so that's it for today's video hopefully it was useful and um, next start looking at relational databases not one of people's favorite topics but very very important so hopefully um, you'll join me for that video next